Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and you're about to watch a live stream replay of my Mega SG unboxing and first impressions. We did everything with this thing, including hooking it up to a Sega CD. We tried out flash cartridges. We looked at the new 8-bit dough controller and a whole bunch of other stuff, including getting uh, Master System games to work with the adapter here. Uh, so it's got a lot of stuff to check out. We did edit the live stream for this upload to make it a little bit better for you, the viewer. There's a description down below, of course, and in that description is an index of all the key points, so you can jump to the parts that are most important to you. And I also have the entire live stream linked down below as well if you'd prefer to watch that way. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the Mega SG here with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody paid for this stream or video, and no one reviewed or approved it before it was uploaded either. So let's get into it and take a look at that live stream of the Mega SG. Uh, so what we're going to do first is unbox this, and then we're going to hook it up. I have a Sega CD that I bought a few months ago. I think some of you saw me playing with that a little while back. Uh, so we're going to connect it up with that at some point. We have a bunch of Sega Genesis games. We've got some Sega Master System games. Basically, I'm going to run through all the things I might usually do uh, in my product review, but in real time, uh, because there are so many reviews of this online right now, I don't think I'll have a chance of competing on that level. So I thought I would just do a live stream. And I want to um, just say hello to somebody none of you have met yet. Uh, his name is Jake, and he is going to be monitoring the chat. Hey, Jake, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. How are you doing, everybody? So Jake is going to be uh, the voice of, uh, of, of, the, of God, maybe, and he'll be uh, keeping an eye on things. And if there's a chat that is of interest, uh, he will point it out to me as we're going. So I'm, I'm trying to work on my live stream pr uh, format. I want to have a live stream that does something, and I don't want to spend too much time looking at the screen. So Jake is going to uh, be uh, taking a look at everything. And Jake has an audio background, although his mic has got a little bit of a hum. But it won't, uh, it shouldn't be an issue. We're going to uh, have him mute when uh, we have no questions to be asked. And the cool thing is that we are doing a lot of NDI stuff again today, which we've talked about on the channel. So I'm going to start off with the unboxing here and take this thing out of the box. Now, I just picked this up. In fact, the stream was delayed uh, because the FedEx guy hadn't arrived at my mailbox yet. So I picked it up. We're going to pull that plastic off there. There you go. Um, I bought this, by the way, myself, so this is a completely paid-for item. Uh, it feels very nice. It's got, um, it's plastic like the, uh, the NT, or the Super NT was, the Super Nintendo console. And by the way, I don't think everybody knows what this does. So uh, what this is, is a replica Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive console. Uh, so this will play all of the 16-bit Sega Genesis and Mega Drive games from 1989 and forward. In fact, the price on this is identical to the Genesis launch price here in the U.S., which was 189 U.S. dollars. Uh, and it's uh, running with an FPGA chip, and we've talked a lot about FPGAs before on the channel. Uh, we have Smoke Monster in on the channel as well, who's watching this, who's got a great channel where he's been covering the Mister, which we've been playing with a bit as well. Uh, so he might be able to answer some questions in the chat for all of you if he's going to stick around for a little bit about some of the differences. But basically, it is a, uh, a means of replicating the original hardware in hardware. And the chip that it, they have inside of this is an FPGA chip that can be uh, programmed with all of the logic of the original chips that were in the Sega Genesis. And these FPGA chips are massively parallel in that in addition to replicating the logic of the original system, you can replicate how the original system worked with all of its different chips working in harmony. Uh, so it replicates all of that in a much more accurate way when programmed correctly. And the hardware designer on this is uh, this guy named Kevtris, who is uh, nothing short of a genius when it comes to these things. And he has put together uh, yet another masterpiece. And if you saw his uh, work on the Super NT last year, you'll know how uh, amazing he is at the uh, hardware here. So that is kind of the basics as to what this is. And I think what we're seeing on screen here is just the limitation of my streaming output bandwidth. Um, and it looks like Kevtris is in here really cool. Um, that's awesome. So uh, he is a genius and maybe we'll have an interview with him at some point because it'd be fun to talk to him about uh, how this works. So a couple things to note on this. Um, this here is a connector for the Sega CD. 
because one of the benefits of replicating the original hardware is that if you map out all these pins properly, you can actually use the real hardware with the, uh, the real old hardware with the new hardware, which I think is remarkably cool. So we will do a Sega CD test in a little bit. I like the weight on it. It feels like a premium product like the Super NT did. Uh, we have a headphone jack here in the front for connecting up headphones, just like the original. And by the way, I have the original uh, on the uh, wall of uh, tech behind me. That's my original Sega Genesis. I bought that during the launch month in August of 89. I think we got them in a little bit early here in Connecticut. So I have been, uh, that still works. I just decided to put it up there to uh, uh, just give it a place of special attention because it really is a great console. All right, so that is the, uh, the console itself. We're gonna boot it up in a minute. And then underneath we have a little rubber placemat, and this is to position it properly inside the uh, Sega CD. I have a Model 2 Sega CD, and this goes underneath the console when you slide it in. So you'll see how that works in a few minutes. It feels like a mouse pad. It's got the uh, textured thing at the bottom. Uh, we have an instruction manual. One of the things these folks do exceptionally well is give you some fantastic documentation. So that's the documentation there. Now, one of the cool things about the original Sega Genesis is that it also uh, could run all of the prior consoles software, which is, of course, the uh, Sega Master System. So this adapter will allow us to run the Sega Master System cartridges, and I have a few over there that we'll play with. Uh, and you could also use your uh, EverDrives, and I have one of those as well. So we'll take a look at its Master System capabilities in a little bit. And we have a few other things here. Uh, we have a USB cable for power. It is USB powered, and you also get a HDMI cable in the box, and you get a power adapter. So you get everything that you need uh, to get going here. So that is the breakdown of stuff that comes in the box. So the next step now is to get our first boot going. And there's been some really good reviews of this. Um, you can check out uh, so many already that have come up. Uh, I was watching the Metal Jesus Rocks one the other day, and my friends from uh, uh, My Life in Gaming do some tremendously good work on these consoles too, so check them out if you want to get all the technical details. We're going to do the plug it in and run it <laughs> test on this video today. Now, one of the things that I did um, out of the gate was I downloaded a firmware update because there is one already. So we're gonna install that first before we do anything. And then we will get our first light going on this thing. All right. So let's plug this in. And I will try to do an input lag test um, in a little bit. So I have my gaming monitor on the other side of the room which we'll, we can hook it up to. Okay, so we got that going. I'm just gonna take the SD card and put it in here. And that is for a system update. All right. Jake, I am back on audio, so if you have any questions that should be addressed, I am happy to do so. Yeah, uh, there's actually one I saw that came in that was asking if there's 32X support for this. There is not. However, I would, I would perhaps, um, if, if Kevtris is watching, we would love perhaps maybe one of those unofficial firmwares to just maybe make their way out into the ether. Um, that would be awesome um, if that were to happen. Because one of the things that has happened in prior releases of this product is that we have seen uh, some firmware make its way out there that uh, would do that. So we will keep our eye out for that. But right now it is just the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. And then it will also work with the Sega CD when it's plugged in. Now I'm going to start with a six button Genesis controller here just to see how it all works. And it looks like one of my things is up here. So I'm going to map uh, input five to my NDI box. And hopefully that will pop up when we are ready to go here. So let's fire this thing up and see what happens. Kev Triss, if he's watching, must love this because this is when it all happens. So we've got that going there. And let me get the audio on channel five up for you all. All right, I am not getting audio yet, but that might be my fault. So let me see if I can figure out where the audio is coming in from. 
Yeah, while you're looking that up, Lon, um, we had a question. Um, what is the LCD monitor? Um, how much lag is on that that you're using? This, this monitor has some lag, and actually the NDI equipment we're using is adding some as well, so this will not be something you want to um, look at for lag um, on this particular stream, because we're just going to try to get everything functional here. Um, I'm going to reset it real quick, because I want to see if I can get some audio out of this. Um, so we will try to do a lag test. If I don't get to it in the stream, I will do one a little bit later. And I'm just trying to get audio out of this real quick. It does have a startup sound that it makes, so I'm just trying to get that, get that going on stream so you can all hear it. There's always a technical glitch that occurs when I am streaming. And this looks like it's going to be one of them. So let me jump into my audio settings. Now, what also happened here um, is that when, um, Uh, when they, uh, I just upgraded my TriCaster, so we also are dealing with some <laughs> upgrade headaches with that. It's never a good time to upgrade your production equipment, so sometimes I just kind of just go for it, and every once in a while we have issues with audio and whatnot. So you know what I'm going to do first is while we struggle with that, I am going to go ahead and uh, get the firmware updated, and then we will to get the audio going. So it wants no other files on the card and it wants the, um, the firmware update on the root directory. Ah, okay. So, yeah, you can now, thank uh, Kevin Sterner for that comment. Thank you, Kevin. And this, there it goes. So now we, we have a, an indicator that it's doing something here. So it looks like it's getting its firmware updated. And when this goes through, I think we will be updated because it's definitely doing something it didn't do before. We'll let that finish updating. And this is important because the firmware that is on this when you take it out of the box, at least at the moment, is from a few months ago. So you'll definitely want to do this before you do anything uh, for compatibility sake. Yeah, uh, while you're taking a look at that question in here from Dave Scarpa, um, he said, this might be a stupid question, but aren't there a million used Genesis cons consoles out there if you, really want, if you really want one? Yes, there are. And actually, that's a very good question because people often say, like, well, I could emulate it, I can do this or that. What, what they've been doing with these analog consoles is they are trying to come up with the kind of the quintessential way of replicating the original on an HD television. And a few months ago, if you look back at my channel, I did a video on a, a device that will get you sort of the way there, but you need to get uh, some, some pretty expensive cables and you need to get a, uh, an adapter to take those, those signals from those cables and convert them to HDMI. And if you're okay with that, sure, you could get something going. I think what's nice about this is that if you're a real enthusiast, um, this is a great way to kind of get that experience um, of, of the original console with very minimal latency. Uh, if you don't want to go through the hassle of having to piece together different pieces of equipment and you just want something that works, uh, it's a very enthusiast, consumer-friendly <laughs> way to go because you can just buy this thing, hook it up, and that is all you need to do. And so I think that can be very attractive for people who are looking for um, an option like that. And I am just try I'm going to get this figured out here in one second. I think I am getting close to it. That's still not going. Almost there. I wonder if I have to map this to another input. Let me try this real quick. Let's see if this works. All right, I think that's going to do it now. It looks like I'm limited to only four channels of audio, so I have brought this into input four. All right. How does that sound, everybody? Okay. All right, so we haven't done anything to this yet. So I'm going to just uh, switch back over. Power up. And we'll just do a quick little gameplay here and see how it goes. Do my first impressions. Yeah, and it, it sounded good. It's coming through. It took a little bit with the, the lag here, but it sounded good to me. So what we are doing here is I'm, I'm going through my, my midlife crisis of, of, of experiencing the September of 1989. 
uh, playing Altered Beast on my Sega Genesis when I, it was the first game I loaded up. This game has not held up as well, um, perhaps, as some of the other Sega Genesis titles, but this was the pack-in. And if you read uh, Blake Harris's book called Console Wars, uh, they talk about how they switched over to Sonic the Hedgehog. And to some degree, there was concern that perhaps, you know, some of the, uh, the imagery in this, because this is kind of uh, replicating a journey to hell, <laughs> and they thought that might not be such a wholesome image for uh, for some parts of the U.S., so they they came up with a more wholesome game to uh, to include in this. But welcome to your doom. All right, there we go. Welcome to your doom. I used to just sit under the sky like this and just kind of relax. And there's one spot you could sit where nothing would happen. Take a nap but it sounds good. I mean, granted, this is not like the game best known for its audio quality and everything, but it sounds great to me. Now, one thing to note, and there's a setting for this that maybe we'll explore and go through the settings for this um, is up here. You see the dithering that's up on the top? Now, on a CRT TV, this looked a little less pronounced than what you see at the top of your screen right now. Maybe the video compression will actually help with that. Um, and I'm going to turn the game audio down a bit. There we go. Um, well, I wanted you all to hear that, so there we go. So I'm going to pause this real quick, and let's go take a look at the menu, which I believe, i got to get my cheat sheet out here, uh, that you can access mid-game by hitting start and down. And let me just pause it real quick. Oops. All right. So we're going to jump over to settings here. And I'm actually going to reset the game because there is a video setting that will do something kind of neat. You know what's weird, Jake, is that I have you on input eight, and your audio is coming through there, but it's not coming through on input five. I, mean, I don't know why it's, I'm, I'm gonna deal with that later. All huh. right, so let's go over to um, uh, advanced mode here. So I just wanted to show off this, this thing real quick. Um, I am, I am going to be fumbling through this because I have not seen any of these menus beyond just what I saw on um, some of the reviews that I saw. So there is a dither blending option. And let's start the game again with that. And I'm going to leave the depth at zero just to start with here. So let's just get into the game real quick. Oops. And what this does is it kind of smooths out the top. So if you look at the top now, um, that looks a little better, right? So let me, and let me go back out of here, and we're going to turn that off now, and just so you can see the difference there. Uh, extra features. And if I turn the dither off, you'll see that the that dithering is back there at the top, and that's going to be useful if. You know, if it, it, this is, I think this is what's an example of what's kind of neat about this is that different people, based on how they were playing these games, how they consumed them back in the day, they had different experiences. And for me, I like the super sharp sharpness of, of playing these games on a modern TV, especially because I'm going to hook this up to my OLED upstairs and sit across the room from it. Um, but there are people that remember these games differently, and they don't necessarily want it super sharp, and they have thought about all the little complaints that uh, people have about... Uh, the way these games should look. So I just thought that was kind of a neat touch that they, they thought about that and added it on there. So, um, so that is that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to pull up a screenshot that I grabbed from My Life in Gaming when they were doing their review. And the reason is that they have like, I always look to them for the optimal settings because I'm, you know, I'm a techie guy, you know, I like technology and doing all this stuff, but I am not always, um, getting into all the, the menus and stuff. So I figured I would let them guide me <laughs> through their review. And these were the, the settings that they suggested for um, the best optimal experience. So let's back out of the menu here. We're going to go over, I think, to scalers. Uh, let's see what they had. I think maybe somebody in the chat can remind me what they set for their scaler. Right now I have it on no scaler. Um, and I think... I think I'm in the wrong spot here. Width and height. Okay, so we're going to go to oops, video, width and height. And this is the screen that they had. Um, 
So I'm going to go in here and adjust to what they had suggested. So they said for 320 width, go to 1482. And you'll see there's 320 and there's also 256. And the reason is, is that uh, there are two different resolutions that your Genesis games might play at. And so these settings are specific for each one. So they said leave both of those at 1482. And you can adjust it if you need to. Uh, the horizontal position they said to bring to 22. The height, 1150. As I was watching their review, I grabbed the screenshot. Because I want to fill the screen up. You might lose a little bit depending on your TV. Uh, but this is something similar to what I did with my uh, NT Mini. And the vertical position, they say 47. And that will give us a little bit of a better image here. So that is looking better to me. So it's filling more of the screen up here. And if your TV has a little bit of overscan or something, that might impact it there. So pretty cool. What's neat is that this, this cartridge, you know, is 30 years old, and you can boot it up in HD uh, on this modern FPGA system, which I think is just awesome. So, uh, anybody, uh, Jake, complaining about the audio mix now? Power up. Or are we good? Uh, kind of dead down for most of the part. Shadow's Eyes says that the volume is too low. Too low um, in the game? Um, doesn't specify the... right now. Okay, I will, I'm going to... Dump up the audio slightly on the game here, but not too loud. And also, Captain318 wants to know if you can post your settings online someplace after the stream. Yes, I will, uh, I will do that. I will do that. In fact, I can post a link when I get done to the image, the uh, screenshot that I took of their optimal settings. So we can do that. And I think it's going to be one of those things where you want to kind of set it based on, on, your own, on your own screen there. Okay, so we are good there. Um, the next thing I want to take a look at, let's tr uh, switch off the system here for a second, uh, is I want to look at my EverDrive because that is a flash cartridge that I bought a while ago. I don't think I have the newest one. I have the, I'm not sure which one this is actually. Um, let me pull it up here for you. So I bought this one direct from Crix, who makes these things. And these are amazing little cartridges. And the reason why with the, Meg with the Mega SG, why you might want one of these things is that uh, this will add save states, which the Mega SG can't do on its own. So that might be something worth taking a look at there. So let's pop that in real quick and see if it works. Some more custom hardware. By the way, I have an SD card at the top. Four gigs is about all you need to have the entire library available to you. So let's power that up real quick. And let's see what happens here. I have a little bit of a delay when things start because my NDI system has to uh, configure the video. All right, so we're going to, again, run the cartridge. And I have not updated my firmware on this in quite some time, but we'll go from there. So let's take a look at Sonic the Hedgehog 3, shall we? And don't get your hopes up. We will not, we will not be able to get any of those 32X games to work, unfortunately. Jake, you had a, somebody with a question? Yeah, Attention2002 says that uh, you didn't save the settings. Oh, he's absolutely right. And guess what? <laughs> this phone yeah, will bring that to your attention. Yep, I appreciate that. So let me, um, let me go ahead and just review those video settings real quick. Uh, Al wants to know. I'm going to go back to advanced mode here to get that. Al wants to know, do you need to power off system to insert cartridge? I, uh, if Keptris is still in there, he can answer. I don't believe you need to power it off. I'm just used to doing that, and it's probably safer to do it that way. Um, you know, because you never, you know, these old cartridges, you don't know what's going on with them. So I would say that it's probably safer to turn it off and plug it in after the fact. Yeah, I just got to respond. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what he said, too. Save preset, okay. Start, save preset, back out. Hopefully that will maintain itself. That was one of the things that some of the reviewers had talked about was the settings don't aren't persistent if you upgrade the firmware too, so I think that's one thing they might be working on a little bit. Joker Wolf says that um, something to be noted that your settings will reset when you firmware update, so right. just something worth mentioning. Yep, and I think they, um, 
that's maybe one thing they're going to work on is that. Now, I have, I'm going to pause this real quick because I have a save state from when I reviewed this cartridge. <laughs> so let me go back out of here. And one thing I have to do is go back to the, um, the menu options because I believe the Mega Drive uses the same uh, controller thing as the system does. So let me do that real quick here. It looks like uh, Tails is getting a little bored there. So let me go over to system again and hotkeys and menu hotkey. All right, so we're going to have, right now it's down and start. So I'm going to have it be um, right and start. And hopefully that will not interfere with uh, what I have on the. Okay, so A is in fire. No, now if I hit down and start. Mark Dell has a question while you're doing that. He says, yep. why did Sega make a garbage mini Genesis instead of something awesome like this? You know, that's a good question because, you know, and it's funny because Sega's had a track record of, of actually working with some of these, these talented developers. So if you look at that, that, that Sonic reboot they recently came up with, that, that game um, came from somebody who had initially was just trying to make his own uh, remake of Saturn in, of uh, Sonic in high definition, and they ended up hiring him, Christian Whitehead, I think it was his name. Um, and he, you know, it's led to some real commercial success. In fact, it's probably the most successful Sonic game since Sonic 3, as far as critical acclaim, because it really is a you know a, a, a reinterpretation of the original. Uh, let me see if I can find the instructions for the Mega EverDrive, because I know this thing can support that. I forgot what the um, what the key command was for supposedly start plus down, although EverDrive is not responding to that, so it might be, some, I may have set it to something else actually, so let me go and look at the user manual real quick on this, and we'll take a quick look and see exactly what it is. Now, what's neat about these flash cartridges is they have their own FPGA chips on them as well, and let's see, file browser, let's see, save, state, in-game menu, okay. So how do we enable the in-game menu? Let's do a quick search for that. Aaron Lewis wants to know, wasn't Sega's Mini Genesis literally the only sensible classic Mini released? I'm sorry, one more time? Uh, Aaron Lewis asks, wasn't Sega's Mini Genesis literally the only sensible classic Mini released? I, th I don't think they... They don't came, I don't think they came out with the mini Genesis yet, right? Because they were, they were going to have at games do it, and then they, they ended up not going in that direction. In game menu on. All right, so I, I don't remember what the. Because that's been a big controversy, which was, which was that they were initially going to have at games do the mini Genesis, and then they, they opted out of that. All right, let me try this again. In game menu, user can call right from the beginning. Okay, push start plus down on the first controller. So, for some reason, my um, EverDrive cartridge, even though I changed the menu for the, um, for, the Ever, uh, for the system itself, if I hit start plus down, I am not getting it. Unless maybe that functionality is disabled completely here. So let me uh, go in here and see if I can just disable the in-game menu here. That might allow our thing to work. Disable hotkeys. Oh, okay. We'll reset buttons. We'll play with that later. So one thing, though, that you can do, <laughs> it just won't work at the moment, uh, one thing that you can do on the Mega EverDrive is do save states, and you can summon a uh, menu to do that. Let me just reboot this one more time, because I want to see if I can get this to work. And in a minute, we're going to hook up uh, this wireless controller, which is the 8-BitDo M30 2.4.
and this is designed to work uh, with the original console, but this one as well. Chris Bailey says, um, hold down start plus down for a couple seconds, then release. Oh, okay, let's try that. So let's go back into, uh, oops, my menu here. I'll jump out of there, I'll go to my demo screen here. But these uh, flash cartridges, if you are buying this, I think getting the EverDrive to go with it is a really good purchase just because you can do the save states as, as a great example. Um, all right, so let's hold down for a second. Oh, you know what? I forgot to save my, <laughs> I forgot to save my settings again. Uh, let me go back over and save the lock. So I think that's going to be one thing that I'm, I'm struggling with remembering to save the settings. And I thought I had saved it before, but I guess I did not. So I'm not going to go through all the video setup again, but let's uh, save it there. And I guess you have to go back out to save and clear settings here in order to save everything. Okay, so we're going to save that. Really save? Yes. Okay. And you know what? While we're here, I may as well just do the uh, video settings too. Holding down, down and start to try to get into that EverDrive menu. And it does not appear to be cooperating. Yeah. Okay, so the X7, it says, this is, I think, the X5, so I'll play around with it a little bit more, but bottom line is, um, as Kevtra said, the, the save states will work on the current EverDrive, and it is a really good purchase for uh, messing around with this stuff. So I'm just going to go back in real quick and uh, go and just get our video settings back to the way they were and I'll save it one more time so we don't have to go through this again. So let's go to height and we want 11, 1482. Get that going. And now we're going to try uh, one more um, of these uh, Sega Genesis cartridges. So I've got a fun one that found its way to me from Hong Kong way back in the 90s. And then we will start playing around with uh, some of the other things. So here, save the settings for goodness time. Really save. Okay. So now we're going to try out a Mega Drive cartridge. Now, when I was a kid, my father used to travel to Asia quite a bit, and he got me, um, this is probably, well, now it's okay, right? Uh, this is one of these bootleg uh, Mega Drive cartridges that has five games on board. So it has Columns, Forgotten Worlds, Hellfire, uh, and everybody's favorite game, which I will show you in a minute here. Now let's run the cartridge. Kevtris says a pro tip, you can press start to skip the boot screen. Oh, okay, cool. I kind of like the boot screen on these things, though. It, you know, it's funny, the, the boot screen feels premium to me. It gives you that feel that, like, hey, this is kind of retro, but it's modern retro. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's like, I like it. I've always liked it. They, they've done that. All right, so this is a bootleg. And it could just be I've got a dirty cartridge here because this cartridge I have not touched in probably 10 years at least. So let me see what's going on with this. Yeah, I didn't clean this before. They, they do recommend cleaning the cartridges before you stick them in this thing. So one more time and we'll try it again a little bit later. I'll hit the start button this time. And there we go. So it goes right through it. Yeah. Yeah, so this cartridge is probably a little bit dirty, so we'll come back to that one in a little bit. Too bad my children are not here. I can have them do some cartridge cleaning for us. All right, so the next thing I wanted to try is the uh, Sega Master System. And, oops, we're going to try out a game that has some FM sound baked in that was not on the original. So I've got uh, this game here. This is Zillion 2, and we're going to pop this in real quick. It's another game that hasn't been booted up in a long time. So they do recommend having uh, clean, uh, clean cartridges. Now, I don't think the adapter works without having to do something in the system menu, but let's see what happens. 
And by the way, also when you switch over to master system mode, the settings are uh, unique for that mode. Okay, so it looks like it, it recognized the adapter that's on there. So I think if we were to use the, and we'll try this in a minute, on the Mega EverDrive, you can actually um, run the Master System games from here if you put the system into that mode. All right. Now, right now, let me turn the volume down a little bit on this. Um, right now, we are running... Actually, it sounds like it's got the FM sound. Let's take a look. So here's a neat setting. So let me switch over here real quick. Now, if you boot up a Sega Master System game and it doesn't sound like how you remembered it, then you might want to go into the, uh, the core settings here, the core options, and turn this off. And I guess we have to reboot the game. And you can hear it sounds different. And the reason is that this game uh, had an FM soundtrack for an FM sound chip that was available only on the Japanese version of the Master System. So you can get that sound out of some of these American games like this one that had it baked in. Um, so you can get the original sound as you remembered it, or you can switch to something else. Now, I haven't adjusted my video settings here, so uh, we'll kind of come back to that, but let's do a quick little gameplay on this and see how the game plays. The, uh, button here to get going. This game was incredibly difficult. And what attracted me to this when I first um, got the game was the fact that it had like the ability to have vehicular combat and a bunch of other stuff that was really hard. And it looks easy at the beginning here, and then once those things start happening, I think it's, it's not one hit, one, one hit close here. But. And I was somebody who really believed in the Master System, which was why I ended up getting the Genesis so early in its life cycle, was that I thought it was like a really, a really great system potential. And the Master System, I thought, I think it's true, the Master System graphics were better than the NES. Uh, and it was powered by a Z80 processor, and that's also what the Genesis used for uh, some of its sound. So they retained that processor, and when you booted up the Master System games, right here. Uh, when you booted up the Master System games, you would be able to actually run those games through the onboard Z80 processor. That's pretty cool when that adapter's in there, it just boots right up into Sega Master System. There go, that's my life. Actually, better at this than I thought. I was actually, this is a game that took me a long time to get by the first level. And then when I finally did it, I was in better shape. But it looks nice, nice and clean, nice and crisp. I haven't done the um, settings yet on this, so I need to do that a little bit. But I'm going to this test here. Anybody ask anything uh, good there, Jake? Uh, there's a couple comments on the games they liked on the Master System. Um, Fantasy Zone 1 and 2 were really good, Joker Wolf said. Yes, those were good. And that really showed off, I think, the color palette that you had on there. And actually, I don't know if you all just saw that, but they had a little uh, throwback to, um, to Fantasy. There you go. See that? The little, the little winged uh, things there? I think that was a... Uh... Yeah, this is hard, isn't it? They don't make games as hard anymore. Well, I guess they do now, some of the indie developers do. But... Oh, so this is what it is. So then you get to a point where you can turn into this robot, and I think, I think you can, okay, yeah, you go into this robot mode, and then you kind of go into the next, uh, this is one of those games that look better in the magazine, perhaps, than, uh, yes, yeah, so then this is like you're on foot. Foot battle there, pretty cool. All right, cool. So let me show you one other Master System game that I liked a lot. Um, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you Choplifter, but what we're going to do instead is use the Mega EverDrive, and I think this is where we have to force it into that other mode. So let's do this real quick and see how that works. So one of the other advantages of the Mega EverDrive is that you can have this one cartridge in all the time, uh, and you can just boot up whatever games you want from either one of those systems. And then on the 32X, which does not work on this yet, um, you can also load the 32X games from that cartridge too, which is really helpful. 
All right, so let's go into settings, and I've got to, again, I am kind of in uncharted territory here, so we're gonna go to hardware. So maybe if Kevtris and somebody's in there can maybe uh, point me in the right direction as to how to, if it's possible, to boot the um, Sega, uh, the, the Sega um, 8-bit games from from here. So let's go over to Choplifter real quick. And start that. So yeah, so you'll get this blinking here. And then I think you have to, f oh, there it goes. Okay, I guess it is going to figure it out. So there must be a little firmware update. So this was Choplifter. And let's take a look at the audio here. So there we go. Now what's notable about Choplifter Notice the scrolling? Look at that. You don't see that on 8-bit games that often, right? And the deal here is that you've got to go and uh, get people out of these uh, buildings. I haven't played this in forever, oh my gosh. Um, there we go. And you could kill them by, by landing on them, so you don't want to do that. So I'm going to load up these guys. Get them in there. I guess we're spending more time on the master system than we are. <laughs> Looks like I got killed here. Um, The core looks very solid, both uh, the Genesis and the Mega Drive, and the, uh, now let's, let's take out a bunch of these guys. Load them up here. And, oh! Well, you get the idea. So you have to pick them up and bring them back. That's kind of the gist of that. All right, so we've had a good run here. It's nice to see that it'll automatically detect the Master System ROM coming over from the, uh, the cartridge, so that's pretty neat. So the next thing I want to do is the Sega CD compatibility. So let me clear the desk out a little bit here. Now I thought what might be fun would be to load up the original pack-in game uh, from the uh, Sega CD. And that game is Sewer Shark. If we're going to play 90s era CD-ROM games, we need to go with the original here. I'm just going to put my audio back in for Jake so he can hear me and me him. All right. Okay. So what we need to do for the proper installation here is use our rubber mat. Get that nicely centered there. And we're going to take off the little connector here. this going here. All right, so we have attached the new system to the old one. It does look kind of silly on here, doesn't it? There was, um, I think it was uh, GameSack or uh, My Life in Gaming, they had, uh, they had it hooked up to the Model 1 and it was really kind of crazy looking. Um, and let's see here. There are a few. You know what, you know what Sega game, uh, Sega CD game that I like a lot is, because uh, 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 Mark uh, Dell was asking. Um, he was asking which ones hold up, and one that holds up really well, I think, is Silphied. That's a fun one. It's a, shoot, a shooter, you know, a spaceship shooter. All right. Now, let's see what happens when we power this on, because I'm not sure what's going to happen. And I think we do have to do something with the audio, too, so let's make sure we do that. And if somebody can remind me <laughs> with what to do there. All right. Okay, so the good news is that we had no um, magic smoke coming out, at least not yet. All right. Yeah, speaking of smoke, uh, Smoke Monster says that Colin said he'd consider making a 3D printed shell piece that married uh, Sega SG and Sega CDs together better. Oh, well, that'd be cool. All right. Looks like we've got. Sega CD working here. And I think Final Fight on the Sega CD was also really good. Okay, so we have to enable the extra audio. All right, so let's do that real quick. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset so that we don't miss any, any moments of, of this. So hang on. All right, so we're going to go to system, we're going to ask me an audio. Uh, 
production scene audio. There we go. Okay. Now we're good. And I'm going to save my settings. I'm guessing they leave that off by default because there could be noise introduced if you're not um, using that. All right, I'll let you enjoy the goodness that is 90s CD games on the Sega. But it works. I mean, that's what's so cool about this, right? And I think it's neat that we've got this new thing working with this old thing. Isn't that wild? So we were all about the Sega CD in my freshman dorm room for about, it was 94 we were playing with it. And then um, we got the 3DO and that was it. <laughs> First time, huh, rookie? Hey, listen, I hear they're putting you in with Ghost today. Now that's my main man. Greatest co-pilot to ever shoot. Nobody won Oscars for this, these performances. Give him your best stuff, and he'll keep you flying. Maybe all the way to Solar City, huh? Pilot, I'll go to Launch Bay 7. I'll go to Launch Bay 7. Showtime. I'm Falco. You'll be hearing from me. So Joker Wolf says, Night Trap. I got that on the Switch. Guy you're replacing? He had that same tough guy smirk on his face that you do. And this was the pack-in game with my Model 2 Sega CD. They're up with handy wipes. But the ghost here, I always come back for more. And by the way, the, this, this uh, Model 2 I bought recently. Because I sold mine with regretted doing so. Take a deep breath, rookie. Ah, don't you love the smell of the sewers in the morning? They smell like victory! This here's the whole hog. Keptris has done a lot of good work, but he, even he this. can't make this video look any better. <laughs> Alright, so let me show you how this game, this game plays. And so this is entirely full motion uh, video. Freeway junction's coming up. Stay cool! Don't let them freak you out. Catfish the whole hog. And your goal is to shoot this. Not this renegade, mate! The critters have six, three, twelve. So this is like, so I'm supposed to like hit the button and move in this direction and then... Yeah, I didn't know that. And this is about as far as I ever got from this game. It looks terrible. It plays even worse. Um, and they, yes, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna die here. So he's supposed to, there we go. He's supposed to hit B and then the direction when it's flashing those arrows at the top. And you have to shoot the sewer rats at the same time. Remember your jump data. And then he'll yell at you and tell you how it works. So it's action and it's quick time movement in one. And uh, somebody's asking about light gun support. So this, at the moment, will not support light guns because it doesn't work with CRT TVs, but they are apparently planning to have an analog outfit on it, which would open the door for that. Apparently, if you don't shoot these things, they drive down your energy. That's it. This is like, you know. And this was a, unfortunately a good chunk of the Sega CD library. There were some good games on it. And I think what happened was is that if you think about what consumers were looking for, you know, they were looking for an experience that, um, I think it was, um, they were looking for an experience that was more different. And the only way you could really demonstrate more was to do some of these video things. And I, I think if they had focused more on expansive gameplay, like they did on, say, on Sonic CD, the platform may have lasted longer. It probably wouldn't have lasted all that much longer because they were in the middle of a big system change to the 30 bit stuff, but I feel like they just focused too much on this full motion video. It just didn't work. It wasn't as interactive as the games were. And Sonic CD was an example, we'll do it up in a second, that 
went well beyond what you'd have on a cartridge. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's like 20 or 30 megabytes of actual game data on Sonic CD. Maybe, maybe more than that. There you go, we're dead. Uh, Digital Playhouse asks, uh, does this work with multi-cartridge discs? That's a good question. I don't know if they ha do they have multi cartridge discs for traditional Sega games? I don't know. That's that's a question maybe that some can answer in the in the chat maybe. All right. Now, I should tell you that this is a burned copy, but I did own it. I don't know where it went. It may even be still here somewhere, but I am not sure where it went. So let's uh, boot this up here. I'm running on Duncan today. All right. They did not pay for that, but they probably should. There's 160 of you watching. Okay. So let that. I like that startup sound. That's good stuff. All right. So we'll run the cartridge again. I love how this works. This is cool. It just works. And that bio screen is super sharp. Look how good that looks. Now, the only issue I'm having with my Sega CD that I bought the other day, or a few months ago, is that the battery backup is dead. And you can see here I'm getting, you know, this nonsense. So I've got to reset my, my control panel. Let me do that real quick. And I think I have to pop the disk out to get that to reset. So I need to, I need to deal with this. And I was looking online as to, like, what the... Um, what the options are, and apparently you have to like go through this whole big soldering exercise to get a new battery installed. I may try to get one of those uh, backup cartridges. And the other thing that the Sega CD added, so the Sega CD has its own processor, and it's and it's essentially a, a, another 68,000 chip, and they added uh, hardware scaling and rotation, <laughs> as you can see here. I'm trying to get into the control panel, not for the not for the system, but for the Sega CD, to reset the the uh, save RAM because it's all screwed up. All right, there we go. So now I have to go over to. Let's see. Um, there was a spot somewhere to get. Oh, that's weird. It locked up. Electron Ash says that light guns would be possible on FPGA cores, but you need a solution for aim tracking on LCD and OLEDs, like a okay. Wiimote camera. Got it. Yeah, that's the trick. Is the that's exactly the problem? Is that you have an issue with uh, ah? Okay. So press any button. We're gonna format. I have to do this every time I use this game right now, which is just a pain in the you know what. Because it, it has no, no battery left on its thing. Um, let me reset. That should do it. Let's see what happens. Joker Royal Fossil says that there are modern, there's modern, blah, 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 modern battery sockets they can solder in that make them plug and play. I think okay. assuming to your uh, backup battery. So let's try to get the... Uh, Sonic CD going here. There we go. I'm going to listen to that music real quick, too. Now, this this game incorporated um, CD audio along with the Genesis audio. And the Japanese version had different music. So if you buy the mobile version of this game, you get both. And I think it's on Steam too. Chance, but there is no circumstance that you can handle. 
This is a burned copy, so the audio is burned. I thought this was so cool when I first booted it up. So I bought um, Sega CD with Sonic CD. I got it. Yeah, Electron Ash says the new Sonic movie is going to suck. He's probably right about that. <laughs> but you never know, the expectations are very low. If you set low expectations, perhaps it will be better than you think. <laughs> I always found it's better to uh, start with a low expectation and have everyone say, yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's a good place to start. I think that's the strategy for Star Wars Episode Nine. Everybody's got such low expectations now, it's probably going to be awesome. All right, let's take a look at gameplay real quick. All right, let's do a new game here. And I think personally that if they had, let me pull up the, the full screen for you. This looks great. And what happened in this game is that you would go from the past or the present to the past to the future, and different things would uh, change in the game based on your actions in those future worlds, um, in the past worlds. And it's so immer it's so Im Im immense compared to what you would typically get with a cartridge-based game back then. And I, again, I think if they had focused on on this kind of stuff, it would have been a very different gameplay experience. And you didn't always, um, you know, jumping into the past and future was optional. But if you did something good in the past, it would impact uh, what happens later. A capture says the trick is that you're supposed to go to the past versions of each zone and destroy their robosizers if you want a good ending. If you want the good ending. Right. And that was what was so immersive, right? Like you can have all these, so, you know, these levels were all different and it took a lot more data to make those different levels. So you can see here, I made a good future. Chemtrist must feel pretty good to have this thing out and shipping at this point, right? <laughs> it's probably consumed him for the last year and a half or longer. Now you can hear the audio sounds a lot better than so you could take these um, CDs and just pop them in the CD player. Because it was really, at the time they made this, there wasn't really a system that could replicate the, to make that kind of audio out of its own. So. Pretty cool. I, I really am impressed with how seamless this is. Because this Sega CD thinks it's plugged right into a Sega Genesis. And there's a lot that's going on right here because you know, you're, you're dealing with essentially uh, you know, two CPUs, well, three actually. You have the Z80, two 68000s, you've got all the hardware scaling and rotation effects that are going on. Um, it's a pretty heavy lift here. And you know, when, when you are looking at an FPGA based system, if it can do this, again, mixing the old and the new, and making it feel like you're using the original. <laughs> it's pretty pretty crazy good. What I would love, especially given that Kevtris is here and listening, is, is if there was perhaps somebody who may have figured out a way to, uh, you know, make it so you can just boot it all up on a single FPGA. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, with an ISO file or something. That'd be really cool if you're 32X. Good stuff. And hopefully you're not watching for my gameplay prowess, because that certainly isn't here. Good stuff. So, I would love to take some questions and get some things that people want to know. Switch 
this off real quick. So I kind of went through the list of everything that, you know, I was looking to cover. So I wanted to make sure that the Sega CD worked. It certainly does. Um, we tried out the EverDrive and all the other stuff. I got to figure out why on my EverDrive, um, why I'm not getting the save state menu to pop up. So I'm going to play around a little bit with that because I know it's on here because I have done it before. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now I think if I put a cartridge in, let's see what happens here with the um, cartridge. Now the way the old system worked was that it would default to the cartridge before it would boot up off the Sega CD. Oh, the pack-in game. Yeah, we haven't done the pack-in game. Let's do that real quick. All right, so before we do anything else, the pack-in game is called Ultra Core. And Kevtris may have more of the story, but as I understand it, Ultra Core is a um, game that was not initially going to make it to the world. It was designed late in the uh, Sega's, uh, Sega Genesis's life cycle. And as such, it was canceled. Apparently, somebody rescued it. You know, the Sega CD audio was a little bit lower, so let me bring it down. That should be better. It's a loud game. <laughs> I'm looking at my levels here. Whoa! Let me, uh, let's do it real quick here. All right. Yeah, it is a little on the loud side. And they did something similar on the uh, Super NT. They had Turrican. And I think they had like some lost levels or parts of the game that didn't make it to the original cartridge. So this game didn't see the light of day until this system was released earlier really this week. This is the packet. No cartridge though, it's built in on the firmware. It's great, a lot of parallax scrolling. By the way, I'm still using the original six button controller. So what you can do when you buy this thing, if you don't have controllers, um, let me pause the game real quick here. If you don't have uh, Sega Genesis controllers, you can get the, um, the M30. And the one you want to look for, for this system, is the M30 2.4G because the 2.4G comes with its own little transmitter thing here too. So, let me pull this back and we're gonna pop in the little transmitter here. Oops, there we go. Just a couple comments here asking if you could uh, increase the voice volume just a little bit. The, the, my voice? Yes. Okay. I will bump it up a little bit here. Hopefully that's better. And yeah, you know what it is, is this, the, the, the native Genesis games are coming in a bit loud. So I'm gonna continue to reduce that a bit. And I gotta pair up this with the transmitter. Let's see if, there we go, all right. And now I've got the wireless controller going here. And boy, that feels a lot better than my old. <laughs> so you know what's funny about these old controllers? Yeah, let me turn down that volume a little bit more because I can see those levels are really high on that. All right, so one of the things that, that I've noticed on the, um, these old Sega controllers you know, when you're trying, and I've been reviewing a lot of these Apito controllers as they've been coming in. They've been really good about sending these to the channel. Um, it's been very hard to know what these controllers really felt like when they were new, because this one, you know, is probably 20 years old. It is really stiff because all the stuff inside is old and stiff. So um, I can tell you, this feels so much nicer <laughs> than the original controller, partly because I think my original controller is just so old and beat up. Uh, this one feels really nice, actually. Um, I, I have not tested the lag on these. I may do another, uh, maybe I may upload a video about this uh, in the next day or two, because I have, I, have um, I have to hook up a whole bunch of stuff to make it, to do that test real quick. Um, but this feels pretty nice, actually. 
And this, this controller, this M30, is different than the one that has Bluetooth built in. So they have the M30 2.4G. I think this is like 30, 30 bucks? And then they have the Bluetooth one. The Bluetooth one doesn't come with the transmitter, but the, the M30 2.4G does. But it, it, it's a transmitter that only works on the original Sega Genesis or this one, or any, any compatible Sega Genesis hardware. So if you are buying this, I would say get the 2.4 controller to go with it, just because it's cheaper. Because uh, you don't have to buy the separate uh, transmitter unit. You can just get it all in one, one go here. And those retro receivers are great, though. So the 2.4 gigahertz retro receive, or the sorry, the Bluetooth retro receivers are really helpful because you could plug that in. I have that one. Um, you can plug it into here, and then you could use your Switch Pro controller, for example, with it too. So there's a lot of things that those Bluetooth controllers bring you. Um, but uh, you know, it's up to you how you want to do it. But this controller feels actually so much nicer than my original one. <laughs> what I like about these these uh, classic Sega controllers, they had these very loose D-pads. They feel really, they're really easy to kind of go back and forth with. And uh, this game especially could benefit from that. So this is the pack-in game called Ultra Core. Good stuff. Yeah. And there are so many settings. So. I would, there's, there's so many good reviews out there and I've watched all of them already. So I would say, um, you know, GameSack and Middle Jesus and uh, My Life in Gaming have all done some really great reviews. My Life in Gaming really does like the nitty gritty stuff. And they actually have settings on here to replicate the bad sound of the Model 2 Genesis, for example. So if you remembered that, like we were talking about with that filtering thing that they had, you can, you can replicate those things too. Um, and it, it supports the PAL mode, so if you have PAL games, you can run it at 50 hertz, um, so there is that option. It's, it's going to replicate the genesis of the Mega Drive to exactly the way you remembered it with, with the right tweaks and settings. In fact, the settings on here are far more extensive than uh, the other one. Um, all right, so let me take a look at one other thing. I want to listen to... Um, I want to get a sense as to how um, Streets of Rage 2 sounds on here. That game had an awesome soundtrack. Let's take a look at that real quick. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. This was kind of a fun way to look at this thing because it's, um, I've been, you know, we were doing this with the Mister also because this is, you know, let's face it, I would, I would love for this thing to be a mass market thing that every consumer wants, but the reality is it's going to be something that I think a lot of us enthusiasts are more interested in. And it's fun to do a live stream as I'm just playing with it and getting a feel for it, because it's really fun to experience a new product and have you kind of join me with, for that, that journey there. So, all right, so we've got... Little uh, Streets of Rage 2 going here. Where did the sound go? Guys did. These guys did amazing things with the Genesis sound chip. What they did with these games is just remarkable. The original system. Do you have any idea where I can get a hold of some games if I wanted to buy this one? I would, you know, it's 
it's hard. Some of the good games now are getting harder to track down. Um, I, I would look at local tag sales. I would be going to the Goodwills, you know, those cause places where I think, you know, people may not be aware of the value of the game. <laughs> it might be, might be a good place to go. And some people in the chat may have some ideas too. Unfortunately, eBay's prices are getting are pretty high. There's a demand for these games. There's a scarce quantity of the originals, you know. And that's where, you know, maybe something like getting an EverDrive would be good because, you know, some of these games are just overvalued in the sense that they're, you know, the collectors have, have a different value than, uh, assign, they assign different values than perhaps the game might be worth in its overall gameplay and fun. So, for example, on the NES, like, uh, you know, Contra is going for a lot, and it's a great game. But it's hard to find the NES version of it. And you can run on an NES. Now, here's actually, here's something you should look at. If you want to do this legally, uh, I talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, hey, sorry, just going to jump in on a couple of comments in the chat about uh, game volume being a little bit loud again. Okay, I'll turn it down. All right, there we go. Um, I want people to hear this great sound. I'll come back to the sound here in a minute. Here's a great tip. Um, if you are looking to do a ROM purchase uh, legally. Um, I did a video on this a few months ago. If you do a search for me in this topic, you'll find it. If you buy the Sega Classics on Steam, you will get the ROM that is just a ROM delivered as part of that package. It'll be buried in your Steam directory and everything, but you can pull out that ROM. You could put it inside of this cartridge, this EverDrive cartridge, and oops, I just knocked it. <laughs> um, you can put it inside this EverDrive cartridge, and you will have a legal ROM that you were able to purchase from Sega with a proper license and be able to play the game legally on an EverDrive. So that might be the way to go. I think they, they sell the games like in, as individual little game things you can add on as an in-app purchase, so it's maybe a you know, two or three dollars. What I don't know is if the new version, which has the VR and everything, I'm not sure if that one works the same way as the one that I did in that video, but that's the way to go. Um, because then you're getting a legal ROM. Uh, Streets of Rage 2 is in that pack of games. And you can put it on an SD card, boot it up on your EverDrive, and you're totally legal. Um, in fact, that is uh, the ROM I was just running on here, I believe, was that one. So. Uh, that is definitely the way to go. And again, you're going to spend a little bit on this, but you know, I think what happens is, is that you know, for somebody uh, my age, this was a fun thing that I had as a kid, and I, I, I really have not been able to get it to work right on my TV upstairs. And this will get it working right without having to buy a lot of extra stuff. You can just have a single console hooked up with a clean HDMI cable, and uh, you are good to go. Um, so that is that. So I think, you know, I, I, I've covered a lot here. Oh, we have a question from Aaron. Does the reset button work like it's supposed to? Because on a normal Genesis, everything is saved into RAM and is not cleared when you hit reset. So that's why X-Men may not work. I, that might be a Kevtris question. Yes, <laughs> the answer is yes to that. Um, so it will work exactly like the original console did. Um, here, let me pull up this game one more time and you can hear some of the music. I knocked my cartridge and it uh, booted itself out there. So let me pull that up real quick here and get you going with that. And another plug here too is if you if you like this stuff, um, follow Smoke Monster, who's in the chat right now. He does uh, the Saturday night um, streams, and he he archives them all on his channel also, so you can watch them later. And he's got a great one of um, a, a Sega Genesis game. He's got everything. He's does he's done it all, and he's been playing a lot with the Mister, which is another FPGA based um, uh, machine, and. It's fun to kind of relive some of these classic games as they are getting released on that platform. All right, so that's coming up. And we'll pull this up for you all again. I'm going to give you some volume so you can hear it. I'm not going to talk too much.
another thing you can do is you can go in and actually tweak some of the sound settings on it, and you could you could hear how the game produces the sound. So I think we can. Do it. Here, everybody. <laughs> um, so let's go over to settings, audio, and you can actually go in and do a ton of adjustment. They did some um, work on the ladder effect, so you can get a feel for all of that in the um, My Life in Gaming uh, review. So there's just so much you can do. In fact, you can go in and adjust the volume levels of each chip on the system. Um, yeah, I think it's under channel levels is where that is. Yeah, this is where you can make some adjustments there. So you can really get a feel for how the Genesis generated its audio by adjusting these, these sliders up and down, which is pretty cool. So before we close out, I want to um, show you one other game that was one of my favorites. Let me grab it up here. Um, this is my copy of Afterburner 2. <laughs> and this cartridge has seen better days, too. Um, Hopefully it loads up here. Let's see. There's something to be said, though, even though I have an EverDrive, about actually just using the real, the real cartridges here. Kevtris mentions that uh, he thinks that the de-dither option makes it look really good as well. The de-dither. I'll have to play around with that, too. And that's what's cool, is you can find what works for you. You know, you can find the image quality that you're looking for and kind of go from there. I got another dirty cartridge. That's the one thing they recommend you do is get your cartridges super clean um, because these are, these are rather dirty and they are probably not reading all that well. So that's probably the problem I'm having here. Um, if not, I'll boot it up on the EverDrive so you can see it. We'll boot this up on the EverDrive real quick. I'm going to spend the weekend cleaning out all these cartridges, I think, <laughs> just to get them in a better position. But this was fun. Yeah, sorry about the game audio, everybody. Some of these games are louder than others, so. All right, let's go jump into here real quick. And I'm going to probably uh, log out in about 15 minutes or so. So if you have questions, uh, throw them in the chat, and James, uh, uh, Jake will catch them as we're going here. And Jake, thank you for your help today. Yeah, of course. This is the, fun. The voice from the ether. Um, uh. All right. So here is Afterburner 2. There was never an Afterburner 1 on the Genesis. And you know what's funny is I remember buying like most of these games that I own, like the trip to the store and all that stuff. So the way they did this is that the guns are always firing, and then yeah, A was your was your speed up, C was slowing down. Smoke Monster asks, what would 13-year-old Lawn TV think about Mega SG? I would be out of my mind with this. I would be out of my blunt mind, first of all, with the EverDrive <laughs> to begin with. But I would be so psyched to have a huge television like I have upstairs, a 65-inch OLED, and the image quality being super sharp. I remember when, we, when I got the Genesis, my father had bought a... He had just moved into a new house, and he had bought a... Uh, an NEC television that was really super sharp. And I loved going over there uh, with my Genesis, uh, with the composite cable, <laughs> and using that TV because it was, the games looked so good. And I think 13-year-old uh, me would, would have been totally nuts about this thing. 13-year-old me also would be nuts about virtual reality, which is like amazing, even though it's underappreciated. Really This is one of my favorites. I actually remember buying this game. So what happened was, this was not a game that a lot of people wanted, apparently. So I had gone down to, um, we had a, a toy store that had opened up not far from me. And actually, before we started the chat, um, I was remarking about how it takes me 20 minutes round trip just to go get a cup of coffee in my, and check my mailbox. Um, so we had a, a toy store that had opened up 
uh, in the next town over from me. And so I, you know, for a while, you used to have to drive um, 30 minutes one way just to get to the mall to buy any video games because nobody stocked the Sega games locally. And the store had opened up called Toy Works, which was a KB uh, subsidiary. And they had, uh, they had this game. And I would call them like every couple of days to see if they got it because my game magazines were all saying it was, it was, the release was imminent. Um, and uh, I remember drive, you know, they get mom to get me in the car and drive over there. And if I remember correctly, this was a $37 game. So it wasn't all that expensive compared to some of the other Genesis games. Most of those were about 50 bucks. This was a lower price game. Um, and that's also the store that I got my Dreamcast at, although they um, have since closed down. But buying a video game back 30 years ago was a big event. First of all, because I didn't have, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have a job really. I was doing a little bit of work at my dad's company and stuff. But um, you know, it was expensive. It was a big component of your income as a kid to buy a video game. So it was, an, it was always an event. So I remember buying a lot of these. Now, one thing that I wanted to note on this game, let me switch back over because I was mentioning it during the stream on the, uh, the Mister, which also runs uh, Sega Genesis stuff, uh, was that I was noting there were some glitches on the screen. Actually, that wasn't the fault of the Mister or the Mega SG here. This game always had a little bit of glitchy video, and I never knew it, um, maybe because I was using crappy TVs back then, but um, this is actually the game. You can see that those little lines that might appear here and there, so that was the result of that. So, pretty cool. Quick comment from Rich Wilson. He says that a light touch with a clean pencil eraser does a great job of the old contact type uh, connectors. Just make sure to dust off the bits or wipe uh, with clean paper. That's a very good suggestion because that way you're not using alcohol or something that might damage the pins. That's a very good idea. I might do that with some of my, some of my games. Cool stuff. So I would be on the lookout, and again, you know, Kevtris won't be able to comment on this, but what I have seen in the past with um, these analog consoles is that there are often things that tend to make use of the SD card slots on these devices. Um, so there is an unofficial firmware on the, um, on the Super NT, which is their Super SNES console. Um, that one has a, um, uh, an ability to load games off of the SD card. And on that topic, by the way, uh, with the Super NT, there is also a flash cartridge for the Super Nintendo called the SD2 SNES that has made a lot of progress lately, and Smoke Monster has been covering that as well. And that's another good pairing for that system. And what I've suggested to, so my, my wife's friends have been calling me about holiday gifts for their husbands, and I've always been saying to all of them, like, get your husband one of these analog consoles with a flash cartridge. And you could, you, that's like the best gift you could get any, any, um, any geek from this, the 80s <laughs> or 90s is one of those because you can really, you're going to get the best experience with one of these things. And I hope as, as things develop here, we might see some ability to get the 32X in place. 32X did not have a lot of games, but there were a few that were really fun. And it'd be great to see that. 32X actually had a great uh, port of Afterburner available too. So that is... Uh, Pretty cool there. Um, Mark Dell asks, um, is there a reason to buy this over a Mister, except for the fact that this is already set up? Yeah, I, I, well, you know, it's, it's up to the individual and what their needs are. I, I think what I, what I like about the Mister is that it's got a lot of other stuff that it can do. Um, I, 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 Smoke Monster may have a better sense of this. I would probably say that the, uh, the accuracy on Analog's consoles will be a, probably a little better uh, be, you know, because Kevtris is behind it too, and I think there'll be a focus on on that, you know, extreme accuracy. Uh, but I like the Mister because it's a fun project. It's uh, something you got to piece together and put it all together. But if you buy one of these, you know, you don't have to do anything. You just plug it in, and, and it works. And it's got a nice case to begin with. Um, I, I have to order a case for my Mister right now. It's a circuit board. <laughs> so, um, so there's some there's some good arguments for going with the analog consoles. What, I, what prompted me to get my first analog console, which was the NT Mini, and I, I have uh, the playlist card that's linked to this video. I've got all of my analog videos up there. Uh, I did, um, when I bought it, what prompted me to buy it was the fact that they, uh, Chemtris programmed a whole bunch of other cores for that system. So it runs like the Atari 2600, the ColecoVision, all those great uh, old consoles with some real decent accuracy. And I think we're gonna see those sorts of things uh, out on Mister, things that don't make sense to release as a commercial product 
you know, the, the market for a Sega Genesis console like this is significantly greater perhaps than what might be out there for a ColecoVision, for example. But there are enthusiasts who would love to see the ColecoVision come to life on hardware, and uh, there is an option for that with the Mister. So I think that's the kind of stuff that will be there. So for me, I'm going to have both. I think if I'm playing a Sega Genesis game, I'll probably play it on the, uh, on the uh, analog console. And when my friends come over, we'll probably play it on the analog console. And there's something to be said about popping a cartridge in and just having it work. You could actually configure the, um, the analog console here to boot the cartridge up, just like the old ones did, too. So you can really make it work like an original Sega Genesis. It's a long answer to a short question. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. It looks like my stream is starting to get a little bit lousy here. So I might be hitting the end of my luck with Comcast. Um, yeah, my stream right now is red, so we're, we're looking like we might be hitting the wall with Comcast, or my wife is uploading something, one or the other. One of my long, long-standing complaints with um, Comcast is that I only have 10 megabits upstream available to me, and I have this stream configured at uh, 4, so that could be why we're dealing with this. So, All right. Well, everybody... Actually, Smoke Monster's got a very good response here. He says that the um, analog machines are the Lambos because you can drive them off the lot and they're absolutely perfect. Mister is a hot rod uh, that you have to build yourself, and I think that is a perfect explanation for the difference there. All right, everybody. Well, I hope this was fun. I've got to, um, I got to jump off here and uh, help out with some family stuff upstairs, and then I have to run out to the school tonight because I am on the school board, and tonight is kindergarten orientation, so I want to welcome all the new parents to the school where my daughter goes right now. Um, yeah, Elias says, Mom, get off the phone, I'm streaming. So this, is, this was a real problem. When I was on in, the, in my BBS days, you know, my sister would pick up the phone and I'd get knocked off the bulletin board system. And uh, streaming isn't much different. You, you can be knocked off the stream <laughs> because somebody's uploading something and it blows out your whole thing. So, um, but I'm glad you all had fun on this stream. I think what we're going to do uh, is we're gonna take the recording of this and Jake is going to cut it up into something a little bit shorter, and we're going to re-upload it uh, tomorrow or the next day, because we'll have a perfect, pristine 1080p copy here. Um, so we'll do that, and I'm glad everybody had a good time. We had a very good turnout for this, about 160 of you tuned in, and it was a lot of fun to, you know, take this product out of the box and just see how it works as in kind of real time. So that was, uh, that was good. All right, so that's going to do it for our live stream replay of the Mega SG. I decided it would be more fun to do a live stream experience video versus a review, just given how many reviews are out there on this thing already. And I really enjoyed sharing this experience with all of you. So let me know what you thought of this and whether or not you'd like to see me do more of these in the future. So leave those comments down below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.